Hey there, folks. My name's Theo. I play middle linebacker for the Hilversum Hurricanes. That is in Europe. <laughs> and I live in Amsterdam, which is the, in the Netherlands. Now that we've got that covered, I vlog every single day of the week, but Mondays and Fridays are devoted to football because those are the days after practice and I can wake up in the morning and do my editing and stuff. So that's that. I try to record as much as I can at practice, but you know, I'm busy doing practice. So there may not be much information. Every Friday, my videos involve comment responses from the previous week on my football videos and some news or if I get new gear or anything like that, plus other stuff. And then the very end of it is practice and then whatever happens at practice afterwards, yada, yada. And those are all marked with chapters down below. In the description, you'll see the timestamps. You just click it. It'll zip that part of the video. So as you can see today, we're going to have comment responses, news, something along those lines, maybe something later. I need to get some information at practice. And then a uh, very hot topic in the American football world, as is right now in respects to the NFL and sports in general, but whatever, they, they are linked. Um, and then I have a piece of gear, so we'll do it in that order and the chapters are marked below. So let's move on to comments. Okay, so since I have not been at practice for a week because Thursday there was a national championship for the Netherlands for football or soccer, um, and that involved Team Netherlands going against Austria, so everyone would watch that one because root on the team. Um, plus, I think our field was getting torn up. Anyways, Sunday, I, mm, my vaccination was conking me out. <laughs> I got it on Friday, wasn't feeling good on Saturday, didn't think I was going to be able to function the next morning, uh, which is true, I didn't actually, but I put a video up for that one, so you guys can go check those out. One of my TikTok videos I put up as a YouTube short, uh, Matt, longtime subscriber, gave a thumbs up, says love it. Um, one of my teammates says, you need Dutch citizenship for the plays of the Dutch Lions. Yes, I'm very aware of that one. It's just, in that video from Thursday, I was just throwing out general ideas. There is not a face there. What are you talking about? Stop. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, and it, so, yes, I'm very aware that I need Dutch citizenship to do that one. When I was trying out a new linebacker program last week, uh, if you go to a rugby pitch, it has 10, 22, and 15-yard markings. Yes, but finding a marked rugby pitch or field here in Amsterdam is very, very slim. Rugby is not as popular of a sport as one would think it is. <laughs> there are a few clubs, but this, is this country is dominated by football and soccer and field hockey for many of my American viewers. In the Netherlands, you guys would call that football and hockey. Because that's why we have American football and ice hockey. <laughs> uh, my live stream, which I'm going to say here, Gabriel comes in, Gabriel Suarez, definitely comes in and talks on my live streams there every Saturday, about midday for the United States, evening for Europe. Um, if you live elsewhere, that's at your respective time, 6 p.m. Central European summer time is what we're on right now. So... <laughs> For those Aussies of mine. Uh, actually, in one video, someone asks if I'm Polish. And I'm like, no, my last name is a, an adopted last name. So, I don't know. I have never done an ancestry test. I don't know what my background is. Uh, I'm white. Uh, back from 2018, actually, on September 4th, I did a... I went down to a sports store called Decathlon. And I picked up a bunch of football stuff because I moved here with two suitcases and a backpack and I had no gear. I had no balls. I had no ladders. I had nothing. I gave everything to Willie when I moved and I brought just my helmet, my pads and all that stuff. <laughs> like I brought like a couple cleats and it was like, dude, you don't have much space to pack this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> but like, Funny thing is, do you realize how much you can squeeze underwear and stuff, shove it inside your helmet? That, that was, plus I had to carry a PS4 and a PS3 on top of football gear and all my clothing. It was fun. Uh, but someone, uh, he asked, do you recommend this ball? I want to play football like an amateur just to kick slash throw and catch with friends. It's a regulation ball. I, I, it's out in the living room right now, but it's it's fine. It's perfect size. It's, you just got to inflate it to the right percentage, and don't be like Tom Brady. But 
that would be fine. <laughs> if it's a regulation size adult ball, it's... <laughs> of course I recommend it. I could probably use it in a game, but we like to use other balls that are whatever. My third suit up video, Bridge City Ballers. Bro, this man is perfect. Don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, and if you fat shame uh, someone, you are a lo if you If you fat shame someone, you are a loser because you're dumb. I play football and it's a hard sport, which is true. And many people are going to fat shame just for absolutely stupid reasons because they want a bit of attention because they think it's going to get a laugh. It's not a great thing to do. I certainly have my issues with my body. Um, but I also got to confess with myself, I am a middle linebacker. I am a not supposed to be a Slenderman. <laughs> you know, a lot less physicality than it is mentality. I've seen some people do some amazing things, but when you happen to be a little bit over the weight you're supposed to be for like fat and not muscle, you tend to be a little bit more exhausted about things. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take my 100 kilos and go from Corona chunk to a little bit more muscle. You know, get sort of this going, not <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, I'm certainly, as you guys can see, not anywhere close to the borderline morbidly obese, but, you know, according to that BMI scale. <laughs> it's just that what most people see in those videos... I mean, I'm literally flexing my abs right now, but you can still jiggle. That's mostly what they're seeing, and they're like, oh, you're fat. Fine. I'm sorry, you can't see this with shoulder pads on. 2016, it's 2021, it's been five years. <laughs> Almost. I was way less weight back then. By the way, 100 kilos is like 220 pounds. Just 225, just letting you know. I, I think in kilos now, so forgot to do that one. I got some new gear from Germany. I just figured I'd tag German in there because I bought it from a German company. I had to get, I got a new jersey and I got a girdle that I'm going to be using later tonight for practice. So, fun times. Uh, and that one is Mitch McLeod. Every time I get new gear, he comes and talks on my gear stuff. He plays hockey, ice hockey, and he has recently come out of a lockdown and is able to go back around and skate on the ice and realizes he needs to get new gear too. <laughs> but for ice hockey, it always seems to be a bit more expensive. Although, if I have to get a new helmet, that's going to cost me a hefty chunk of change. I'm going to have to wait till, hmm, <laughs> if I, that needs to happen. And that's it for comments. Uh, I have a video yesterday that was talking about an emotional reaction to video. You can check that out here. Um, that will be later as I give much more not so over emotional about that topic. And then um, my TikTok had a video about it. So we're going to go into that one. News. Now we're going to talk about news. So the ELF had its inaugural weekend. I guess is the terminology. Yeah, there's seriously no face right there. What are you doing? It's going to stop blinking at me. Anyways, so yeah, the the and the and ELF had its inaugural weekend and all the teams played their very first game. And like, I understand that a lot of people like in the NFL and when there is multiple teams throughout the entire season, like the NBA, <laughs> they like to keep track of how many people or how many teams are going undefeated. And I'm like, you guys have eight teams in the first week. I mean, I understand there can be tie games and they're really hard to do in football because at least with our rules, we have to go through two overtimes or something like that. It rarely happens because the points are, you know, odd. But anyways, you're gonna have four teams undefeated. It's like, bro, I get it. It's sort of like you go through the NFL and everybody plays week one and suddenly they're just like, oh, we only have 16 undefeated teams. Like, I get the joke, and that it'll, it makes much more sense later, but I heard something announced on our group chat for the team um, that we have to, we've had to use to, like, sign in and check in for, say, we are coming to practice because the corona rules and stuff. So, there's something about the AFBN is announcing a long season. I do not know what that means. Um, a bunch of people in the chat seemed to be super excited about that one. And since I missed Sunday's practice, I asked a couple of them what they were, and they're like, I haven't heard anything about it. I'm like, that's probably because the NF or the AFBN is... Mm. So, fun times. They're just proposing things and figuring out what that is. Um, but the possible things that could be is we may actually have a bit of, like, a first half of the season. Kind of like we'll have a season A and a season B, but it seems odd 
that we would do that because most teams right now, like we're in the process of getting vaccinated amongst the 30 year olds. So I do not know what this long season means. It seems odd that you would have like games as a 5A in the fall and then maybe take a winter break and then go do a 5B if that's what they mean. Like, I don't know. Usually we start like la in 2020, we had two games before lockdown and those were February and like right at the end of February, and then we had a week off and then Corona lockdowns in mid-March. So it's awkward because usually our camp that we go to is in the end of January. Um, that's what it was for the last two years for me. And then obviously we didn't have one last year in 20, or this year in 2021 because we weren't allowed to, we couldn't go outside <laughs> basically. So yes. I do not know what this long season means. That's what I'll get more later today in information. Um, I will ask my coach about what that long season means. It's entirely possible he's going to be like, other news. Okay, so I think some lower league German teams are actually starting up a very shortened season. Some just like four games. They may even not be real games that'll go towards promotion or demotion. Just sort of like, hey, let's get people out and doing something because we're, we've been bored. Um, that may work also with England. I'm not sure how this one's going. Now that the vaccinations are rolling out here in Europe, it's sort of like, we don't really know what to do. And they're all hesitant about opening up too fast. Although we're pretty much going to have no restrictions after this weekend. So, um, that's pretty much that. But with the GFL, they're working on week three or four right now. So they have some teams, but they're actually, um, it's funky the way the GFL is working right now because so many of their elite players moved up. This is not to shame any of those players for moving up into a higher level, more competitive level of football. This is totally fine. But you can see, let's make the, the, the analogy for the United States would be all your D1 schools suddenly have the senior class graduate. And, you know, many of them go on to this, you know, the, your seniors graduate and go on to the NFL. What happens when your quarterback moves on and one of your receivers and a couple of your linebackers? Suddenly your team starts kind of suffering a little bit. Now imagine uh, that's a lot of D1 schools going into a very limited position for the NFL. There are six GELF German teams that probably split amongst uh, at least the GFL 1 and 2. So we're looking at about 16 teams total per 1 and 2. So 32 teams went funneling into 6. It, and those were the elite players of those. So the GFL is having its kind of weird... I don't want to say recruitment issues, but the, the levels have shifted and things are a bit awkward. Also, people moved around due to the thing. A lot of people have been talking about on the forums and stuff that the GFL doesn't seem like it was literally what it was. I was like, well, one, we got all hit by the pandemic and lockdowns and stuff, and not everything's back to normal. Some people realized, maybe football isn't my thing anymore. I need to take care of my family. Or they had a family, or they had to move due to work or something, and... Or they moved on to the ELF or they had to go back to the States for some reason. I know that's why one of our guys isn't playing here in the Netherlands is because he had to go home. He had to go back to the States and take care of his mom. And I was like, that's fine. You know, family over staying in the Netherlands. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to my new cleats. These are just practice cleats. The cleats are Nike Vapor Speed 2 TDs. Um, I believe these are probably the next model up from the previous ones I had. But as you can see, they are black. My team colors are blue, yellow, and then the off jersey is white. Um, but yellow is such a subdued color on our uniforms, it would be a bit silly to have, you know, yellow cleats for a blue uniform. It's just awkward. These are size 12. I'm going to be using them tonight. I did have one similar to this before, but they were molded down here. And I have white ones that are molded, but it's going to be, it's sort of awkward right now because our field's being torn up. But see, these have these, this is the one thing I can never find much in our, ca in the casual sports stores here, like Decathlon, is they don't have these front teeth because 
you just want to have a bit more grip up front. <laughs> you just do because, you know, I'm going to have to break these cleats in tonight. I just got them yesterday, but these are, you know, my right size and, you know, I'll probably make a TikTok later about football stuff since I'm going to practice. Um, but yeah, <sighs> these are the new cleats. Again, they are not intended to be going for any game uniform, but they're probably going to last much longer than the Adidas, Adidas Adi Zeros that I had that the whole cleat plate just popped right off in the middle of practice. I was doing ladder drills and I immediately had the ladder stuck in between because everywhere but here popped right off. Everyone says you can get Adi Zeros. They're the best cleats ever, man. I, I, I wore them, I think, that was my second practice and they broke. I have since returned them to the store where I bought them. That's why I got those. The other thing I got yesterday was knee pads. I'm not gonna show you guys knee pads. They're freaking knee pads. They're freaking knee pads. <laughs> but anyways, so, a couple things. Between Monday and Tuesday for me, while I was asleep, Carl Nassib, defensive end for the Las Vegas Raiders, made a post on Instagram and he came out of the closet. And he has become the first active NFL player that's openly gay. And everyone's just like, what about Michael Sam? Okay, what about Michael Sam? The thing is, is he got put onto a practice roster and then they kind of shunted him off the team. Then he went to another team, was on that practice roster, and uh -uh. So he went up to Canada, but was having way too many issues. I think he tried to play with the Alouettes for like one or two games. He was on their depth chart, but then he like quit football and I have no idea what happened to him. Um, and that's, that's pretty much that. So, so Carl Nassib came out and he also donated $100,000 to the Trevor Project. Yes, thank you. So I made a TikTok post welcoming him to the crew because I am a gay American football player. I'm <laughs> but I'm in Europe. So, yes. If you want to go over to my TikTok or find the YouTube short, I will link the short here. You can go over to my TikTok. It's just Dashrick. You'll find it and you can watch those and a couple other videos. Uh, it wound up actually sparking a lot of conversations as well as a lot of hate. Some hates of why does it matter? You know what, in the long run, it shouldn't matter, but it still does. Because eight years ago, I was already out. I've been out since I was 18, 19 years old. It is so long ago, like 20 years. I've only been playing football for eight, but I've been out for 20. So that's pretty much that. And yes, I was a little bit mums the word my first season with the Portland Monarchs because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> but also there really wasn't, there wasn't any representation in the sport. So it was sort of like, I was doing the whole don't ask, don't tell sort of thing. You know, until people asked and then I honestly told the answer. Like, oh, who's that friend that comes with you to practice and, you know, sits in the car? Oh, that's my boyfriend. Your what? That got a little bit awkward at times, but eventually everyone just sort of had that sort of like, hmm, tolerance. And things were a bit awkward, and I don't know, I can't necessarily pin any of the performance and not much playtime in the States on anything specific because I like to have strong, verifiable answers on things, and if I supposition too much, that leads to conspiracy theories. But I cannot discount that certain people within the coaching staff or the senior members of the teams were a bit <clears throat> so they were just like well you know he comes to practice and he puts in the work but you know <clears throat> so anyways fast forward you know and because of playing football I reached out to Outsports because I saw Connor Mertens and Michael Sam and their stuff and I was like oh my god look I'm gay I play football look at me that all happened, but that was 2016. So I put a little bit more F and then once the hype ran over of that one, I realized that there was, that they were still looking for, like here I am an active player in semi-pro, but they're like, no, 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 no. It's good for you, good for you for playing your sport and living your truth, but we're really looking for that NFL player. I mean, you're not paid, so you're not professional. Like, they had a very slim idea about what they wanted. And I, and I confirmed this with many other older gay people that were talking to me, um, and that's pretty much what is what went on with that way back when. Fast forward to now, we have Colonel Nassib. He is a defensive end. He is a beast. 
I've watched many NFL games. I've seen him playing this last year. You know, I wouldn't mind having him on my, obviously. So that has come with a whole lot of um, crap on TikTok, but it's TikTok. I can just not interact with those comments. And if they're super hateful, just delete them because we don't need that sort of stuff. People are like, why do we need representation? Because people like me eight years ago didn't have representation. And while that didn't stop me from playing football, well, you should just keep it to yourself. Keep it in the bedroom. Don't fool around in the stands. One, when's the last time you played football, bro? I literally have no thoughts about that on the field. I am literally too exhausted and too busy. I mean, mm -hmm. end of this whole topic here, but a lot of these guys that are like, you're shoving it down my throat. Keep it in the bedroom. What are your thoughts? Why are you thinking about this so much? Certainly not mine. <laughs> you know, mine's like Mike A. <laughs> Mike A. And what was it? one of my teams had Titan for some reason. And it was, we go to the tight end, whatever. It was a strong side because we had a bunch of teams that used tight end. So we said Titan and that was, the D line was shifting towards the tight end to the strong side. <laughs> so I had to make sure that my Mike A was going into the right gap because when, anyways, and then I had to make sure that our defensive backs knew that we were in cover two, <laughs> Mike Linebacker. And so I have to do all that when I am not, and I'm focusing on that ball. I am not worried about what some of these guys think I'm worried about, <laughs> you know? And then usually after a game, I'm sore, I'm achy. I just come home, I lay down, I'm usually half closed and I'm in the process of having cramps in the middle of the night because nobody hydrates enough. <laughs> So that's pretty much that. I don't know what <laughs> these guys are talking about, but you know, go a little bit more steps. So yes, like I said, I sent out the video for him. I sent out actually a direct message to him on Instagram. Not necessarily sure if he's ever gonna see it. It's, you know, he's probably getting absolutely inundated with most, a lot of people. He's probably even getting hate mail <laughs> on Instagram for what he's done. But how this responds with Germany is because we're talking about LGBT representation in sports. In the GFL, many German teams, many German teams, including a couple ELF teams, changed their logo to a rainbow logo. Now, to be fair, the NFL and USA Football and NFL Deutschland and the CFL all did that at the beginning of June. However, as this pertains to the UEFA, which is a soccer tournament, Hungarian team was playing in the with the UEFA 2020 against Munich in Munich and the German government decided we'd like to plaster our stadium with rainbows. They basically wanted it to look like that. And the UEFA said, no, you cannot make your stadium a pride flag for that game. Because in Hungary, what they did recently is they barred all education about LGBT people. What Germany did is all of its major stadiums, except for Munich, covered themselves. Many whole castles and whole, you know, areas of town were just plastered with rainbows in the rest of Germany because the UEFA said you cannot do it in Munich. So the rest of Germany did it. And many American football teams in Germany did it for their social media pages a couple days ago. I have actually been in a quite a big fight with someone on the Cologne Centurions page. He is from, he's an American football coach in the Southeastern United States. Hmm, we know what kind of that is. But anyways, um, I'm not gonna put it out there and drag him publicly, but you know, he says, we need to not get things politicized in sports, keep sports to sports. And I had a lengthy response that ended with, then get the military, the anthem, and the United States flag out of the NFL. His next response started with the American flag, a finger pointing at it and saying, this is not political. And I was like, you're done. You're done. Like he had more paragraphs and I have screenshotted it in case he deletes those or blocks me or something and I can never see them again. But I screenshotted him. Nah, just for future reference. But anyways, I mean, mm, no, I could post it for my Patreons. They'll like that. Yeah. Anyways, I will 
uh, that's pretty much that. So, also the ELF actually pinned my post uh, to their main page. The ELF posted that. And my comment says, hopefully maybe I can play there one day and help bring gay football players to the elite European football. And they pinned that to that post. As I told one of my old teammates, I'm not getting any hopes up until I get a DM. But anyways, I will see you guys out in Hilversum. We're going to test out those cleats, test out my girdle, test out this new thing. I do not know because I have a physiotherapy appointment for this part of my elbow. Um, tomorrow, we'll probably figure that one out. I uh, will probably give updates on my Sunday video about that elbow. Um, things are funky. Anyways, zip on forward at like six hours, seven hours from now. Got everything here. I'm at the field. Look, it's the tires. And the, uh, the sled. And, uh, I do not know what the fire department is doing with a mobile yet stationary ambulance. Like, they brought it on our truck, and now they're putting it down. I don't know where we are practicing. Look, there's a stump thing right there. Survey material. I mean, the pads are still up on the light poles. This may be, <laughs> I didn't think this was gonna be a quick job. Unless it's done. Unless it's weirdly done. I mean, it's been a week. I don't think they're done though. It just looks like they put stuff down to like, I don't know. I realized I had to like quickly put up a TikTok, so I answered a question from uh, the Carl Nassib video. That was, that was fun. And then I captioned it while I was on the train here. I'll probably record something tonight and put it up for tomorrow, but you know, that's always fun. Just looking around. Yeah, see, that thing got pulled out. No, not really a football block, but day in the life. Our field being redone. <laughs> oh, hello. Look at this jersey, look at that fit. Works really well. We were in the back with uh, the, well, nobody's here right now. So here's the clubhouse. There's the locker rooms, we're around there. Our container, which holds our football gear, is right about there. But they're back there. Um, there's no solid space. It's a baseball field. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know what time it is. But the arm was acting up again. I felt it while I was getting the pads on. It started bugging out while I was doing push-ups. Nothing engages a panic attack like failing to do push-ups like everybody else on the team. Down on my grandpa youth knee pads. Struggling just to keep stuff. Never know how many we're doing. Trying to learn Dutch as fast as I fucking can. Then I hear, oh, knia, oh, knia. <laughs> oh, knia. And I'm just like, I don't know what they're saying. I mean, that's obviously on knees, and then they laugh. In the state, something like that would be mocking, right? Weak ability. Ah, this arm is bugging me. Hack brought out some beers. I may go over and have one after this. Okay, getting that off wasn't nearly as, ah, don't. That's the problem, it's pulling on my elbow. And I hope it's not a transited pain, but it's actually, why do you keep doing this right? Because they're easy. For those of you that are also watching, it is 10.20 at night. I think the sun is officially setting right now. I mean, the locker rooms are open, but the place where I can set up the tripod is not available because the field stuff. <sighs> These cleats did really well in the crappy... We were not playing on an actual football field. We were playing in the 
area around the clubhouse. That's where we were doing most of our drills. I mean, look at that. I mean, they did dig up dirt. The problem is a bad arm and I couldn't lift it very much. And then I got in my head that I'm broken. <laughs> you know, it seems stupid, you know, and then trying to get low, get low, get low. And then the hamstring had a massive cramp, so I drank about 500 milliliters of water and <laughs> tried to see if that fixes it. Still don't really understand the biology behind that one. Never actually works. It's not a magical pill. <sighs> but my liter and a half water is down to that. I'm trying to be the big boy and not take all the pain medication just to come to football practice. But I didn't partake in the... And we did some hitting drills and stuff. And that's probably what aggravated the shoulder a bit more because it's wrap up and... <sighs> Even doing that hurts. So hopefully the physio has something to say tomorrow about that. But yes, the cleats work really well. Um, remember, they are Vapor Speed 2s. Um, I brought them up earlier. It's been... I mean, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> I recorded that at noon. <laughs> it's been 10 hours for me, guys. So, yeah, I'm not going to take the belt. I'm not going to. I'm just going to strip right here take my pants off it's not a big deal the knee pads are just saucer huge I, I you guys saw if you guys watch daily vlogs it was daily it was yesterday it was so hard to get these things into the pads to begin into the pants to begin with and on top of that they're just sliding around on my knees because they're so gargantuan and they don't go over my calf <laughs> ah I don't know how I got these things on Look at this shit guys it's stuck on my calf. They're a little bit rough. The, the shoes. Look at these. Fucking. Anyways. I'm going to put my actual pants on. And uh, I'll finish up the vlog on the walk back to the uh, bus station. This is pretty much the end of the sports day. Oh, long season. That is apparently we're going to be starting an actual season somewhere in October and we will end in July. How is this gonna work? Well, we're still gonna have the old system, 10 games, playoffs, tulip bowl, but we're gonna spread the games out so it's not like game every weekend. I don't know why. I mean, it gets, it gets us back into the system and it feels like, oh my God, that's gonna be any time now. No, it's still June. I mean, it's going to be July here soon, but yeah, I was trying to figure out, did my, sh did my cleats leak or not? I didn't film much because we were in a weird spot and I was in pain and it always sucks because it feels bad that when I have to sit out reps for something because I'm hurt or I'm dizzy or panic attack and then I start filming, it makes it seem like, oh, he's taking the pictures in. There's no beer left. Okay. Whatever. I will uh, catch you guys on Sunday for stuff. It's not really a fun day of practice when you scream out to pretty much everybody in earshot that you're a dead end loser and you're not, your career's not going anywhere. It's one of those days at practice where I start screaming truths.